Hi, good day. Welcome back to our class, Chemistry 100B Laboratory. Today, we're going to have a post-love lecture about the activity that we have done on the Bunsen burner. If you're going to take note, the first part of the activity was the Bunsen burner was dismantled and the parts were cleaned then each part were identified and given their functions. For the parts of the Bunsen burner, we have the barrel where the air and the fuel gas mix. Then we have the collar where it controls the passage of the air. Then the air holes where the air enters. If you're going to dismantle this part, the barrel from the base, then let's go to the parts of the base. You have the gas spud, which conducts the gas from the gas inlet. Then there is the gas inlet, where the gas passes through. Then we have the base, that it supports the entire burner, and the gas regulator, which controls the flow of the gas. Then, after naming the parts and giving the functions of each part of the Bunsen burner, the Bunsen burner was assembled back. After assembling back the Bunsen burner, you are told there in the procedure to connect this to the gas cap. Now, let us try to recall how to connect properly the Bunsen burner to the gas cock. The first thing that you are going to do is, you are going to soften the rubber tubing. Then, you insert this rubber tubing to the gas cock in such a way that the rubber tubing will reach to the third thread of the cock. And test by pulling this rubber tubing and see to it that it will not be dislodged from the gas cock. So, if it is already properly fitted onto the gas cock, then it is now ready, I mean the Bunsen burner is now ready to be ignited. Then, when you are going to ignite the Bunsen burner, there are also proper ways to follow. First, you are going to ignite the matchstick, then place this matchstick on top of the barrel of the Bunsen burner, then you open the gas cock. Now, do not do the reverse because it might lead to an accident. Because if you are going to open the gas cock first, before igniting the matchstick and place onto the barrel, then the tendency is the gas will flow and diffuse out from the barrel and will cause a greater fire or a bigger flame. Then, once you have already the lighted Bunsen burner, you are asked to open and close the air holes. Take note that when you close the air holes, the color of the flame is yellow or yellow orange. Now, this color is telling us that the flame is not so hot. This is what we call a luminous flame. But when you are going to open the air holes, then the color of the flame becomes bluish or blue or even to the extent that it is colorless or violet, then this kind of flame is what we call a non-luminous flame. And this is a hot flame. In procedure number three, you are asked to expose an evaporating dish onto the flame which is luminous. And what have you observed? Isn't it? It formed a black substance at the bottom of the evaporating dish. Now, how do you call this black substance? The ordinary name of this black substance is soot. 
and the chemical name for soot is carbon. Why do you think so that there is the, this black substance deposited at the bottom of the evaporating dish? This is because the gas that flows through the barrel lacks air so that there is no complete combustion. So the gas is not completely burned. There are a lot of carbon which are emitted together with the flame. Now when you open the air hose and expose again the evaporating dish into the kind of flame where the air hose were opened, you notice that the color of the flame becomes bluish or even colorless. Now when you expose the evaporating dish, you notice or observe that there was no black substance deposited onto the bottom of the evaporating dish. Why? Because all the fuel burned completely because of the presence of air that makes a complete combustion. In number four, you were asked to adjust the air hole so that you will observe the two cones of the flame. Now you notice that when we ignited the Bunsen burner and the air holes were open, you saw that there were two cones formed, the outer cone and the inner cone. Now that outer cone seems to be colorless while the inner cone is bluish. Now that outer cone is hotter than the inner cone because there is complete combustion that occurred while in the inner cone there, this region is otherwise known as the reducing region because there is no complete combustion occurring. The outer cone is otherwise known as the oxidizing region. You were also asked to spray charcoal onto the non-luminous flame. You notice that when you spray the charcoal, you notice that the color of the flame became luminous. So this is one way of making the flame luminous. If you observe, the flame can become luminous when you are going to spray any incandescent substances such as the charcoal or when you close the air hose. Then you were also asked to wet a piece of cardboard and then place this cardboard onto the barrel of the Bunsen burner where there is a non-luminous flame. Take note that when you place this wet cardboard onto the top of the barrel of the Bunsen burner, with a non-luminous flame, there was a trace of the flame that was sketched on the cardboard. Now, take note that the outer part of the flame burned or got charred first rather than the middle part or the inner part of the flame. So that is a proof that the outer part of the flame is hotter than the inner part of the flame. Next, you were also asked to place a matchstick at the center of a non-luminous flame. I think you have noticed that the matchstick did not ignite readily. That means it took some time to ignite when it was inserted at the innermost part of the flame. Why do you think so? This is because at the innermost part of the flame that is composed mainly of the gaseous fuel. There is no combustion occurring because there is no more air entering into that part. So this is the reason why the matchstick 
ignited quite some time. Then you are asked to place a glass tubing at the top of the barrel at some angles. And they were also asked to ignite the other end of the glass tubing. Now, I think you have observed that the other end of the glass tubing, when it was ignited, there was a flame that was produced. Now, why do you think that there was a flame that was produced at the other end of the glass tubing? When the glass tubing was placed on top of the barrel, the gas from the Bunsen burner passes through the glass tubing so that when it was ignited, it formed a flame. After doing the activity, you were asked to turn off the flame of the Bunsen burner. Now, in turning off the flame of the Bunsen burner, do not blow it off. You cannot put off the flame by blowing out. Now, what are you supposed to do? You are going to close the gas cock. Turn off the gas cock. That is the safest way of putting off the flame of the Bunsen burner. And see to it that the fuel is closed. And you are also reminded that the gas cock should be turned off because the gases that will be coming out from this gas may be toxic or harmful. What I would like you to do after the post-lab lecture is you are going to write all the observations into this lab guide for the activity on the Bunsen burner. If possible, you are going to answer all the questions asked and you have to also to draw the diagrams which are asked to be done. And you have to write also the conclusion and also answer the applications. So that would be all for today. This is your teacher, Professor Nisitas Ruiz of Holy Name University.